So I want to talk about the process of non-disjunction. And this is a process that happens during meiosis where sister chromatids don't separate or segregate properly during cell division. So as we've seen before, when we have a single cell in a diploid organism, it first goes through synthesis phase, where each of those chromatids replicates, forming a tetrad. And then it's through the process of meiosis, the two cell divisions, that produces daughter cells that are initially diploid, and then the second meiotic division produces four haploid gametes. So this is what normally happens during meiosis to produce gametes that can be used to fertilize and propagate an organism. However, in C. elegans, sex determination occurs by X chromosome autosome dosage. And in this case, males have a single X chromosome and nothing else. So just one X chromosome, no second copy. Whereas hermaphrodites have two. And so you might be wondering how you get an organism that's diploid but only has one copy of a chromosome. That's where non-disjunction is important. In this case, what happens during meiosis occasionally, maybe one in 500 times, one in 100 times in C. elegans, naturally, just by chance, that cell division process goes awry. And what happens is, in that first cell division, we could imagine that those sister chromatids segregate as they should during that first division. So these two steps are equivalent. Non-disjunction means that those two chromatids don't disjoin or separate into the four gametes during the second cell division. So in this case, what might happen is this daughter cell segregates properly, but this gamete, pregamete, undergoes non-disjunction, where both of those sister chromatids segregate together into one gamete, producing one gamete that does not have a copy of this specific chromosome. It might have copies of all the other chromosomes in this organism, but this one in particular that we're focusing on here is lacking in this gamete. So you can imagine that what would, could happen is this individual might be mated with an individual that's undergone meiosis and produced a set of normal gametes, each of which has a single copy of each chromosome. And resulting products of fertilization then could be, you get an individual, if this is the X chromosome we're tracking, that only has one X chromosome, because the other gamete that was used to fertilize and produce that embryo didn't have an X chromosome to begin with. That's how you get something like an XO organism. And hopefully you realize that by virtue of non-disjunction producing null or nullozygous is sometimes called. I don't know if I'm a proponent of that term, but you can use it if you like to, nullozygous. When you make a null gamete, you also make a diploid gamete. So we should think about what else happens during fertilization in this cross in terms of what are the genotypes of the offspring.